Hi everyone. I've been wanting to make more videos about my experience getting my master's in library and information science, but the semester has been really crazy busy. I'm balancing a bunch of different projects in my classes and it just has been kind of all consuming. So I haven't had a lot of time to commit to video making and I, I apologize for that because I really want to make more videos about my experience, specifically focusing on what I'm learning. Doing like an overview of my semesters is very intimidating and uh, difficult. And I, I wanted to kind of do a recap of last semester before this semester started, but I didn't get around to it. So I would love to do sort of like a first year retrospective once the semester's over. Hopefully I can do that. But for now, I wanted to address some myths or misconceptions that I hear thrown about concerning what a master's in library and information science degree is good for, um, the utility of it, and librarianship in general. I've obviously learned a lot about librarianship since I've started studying it. A lot of people have misconceptions about what the degree is for, what the profession is like. So I thought that I would dispel some things, some misconceptions that I've heard a lot about and feel equipped to address at this point in my career. Number one is that because I'm getting my master's in library and information science, I'm gonna become a public librarian. This is just not true. That's not to say that I won't become a public librarian or that's not what this degree is good for. You certainly can work in a public library after you get this degree. However, that's not what it's specifically directed toward. There are a bunch of different kinds of libraries that people I think aren't even aware that exist. There's public libraries, academic, there are medical libraries, corporate libraries, law libraries. There are special collections and archives. There are school libraries, specifically like K through 12 schools. So there are a bunch of different places this degree can take you. Um, it does equip you to be able to work in a library in general, and it does give you skills to enter a public library if that's what you're interested in, but that's not specifically what we're all training for. Um, so we do learn some of those skills, but that's not the end goal for everybody. I've had several people assume that's what I want to do with this degree because they know people who've gone down that same path, but that's not the only utility of the MLIS degree. And I'm sure that there are schools that are more targeted to other kinds of librarianship, so it's important when you're going into this degree that you kind of know what you're interested in if you have a particular interest in finding a school that caters to that. For instance, my school has a specific school media program, so if you want to become a school librarian, my program can do that for you. I didn't really know what kind of library I would, was going to be interested in, so I went to one that offered electives in a bunch of different areas and kind of bouncing around between all those. Like for instance, I'm taking a class right now on practical archives and what it's like to work in an archive, how to process archival collections. It's really, really fun. Um, and it's not a path that I'd ever considered before I started the degree. So there are a lot of utilities even outside the library. Myth number two is less about my studies and more about um, librarianship in general, public librarianship. I wanted to discuss briefly the value or lack thereof of overdue fees. I'm very staunchly against overdue fees. And I wish that more libraries would just get rid of them. Uh, like for instance, my local library back at home, the Denver Public Library System has recently gotten rid of overdue fees across all of their branches, and I just was so proud of them. Overdue fees definitely contribute to, to a phenomenon that's called library anxiety. There are a lot of different causes of library anxiety and lots of other manifestations, but I think that one root is that people who have overdue fees fear going to the library because they fear being scolded for having these fees. It's a source of shame. Um, and the more that the fees accrue, you know, the more insurmountable the idea is of returning to the library because of that shame. People that can't afford to pay their fees are also probably people that need library services the most because if they can't afford to pay their fees, they also probably can't afford to buy their own books. So if they can't go to the library because of fees, then they don't have access to books at all. And that is definitely not equitable or fair. And libraries don't get that much money from library fees. That's not like the source of all of their funding. Um, in fact, they, the, the amount of money that they get from library fees is generally pretty small. Having library fees at all or making it difficult to pay library fees, for instance, libraries that only allowed you you'd pay in person in cash, are other barriers that prevent your patrons from actually reaching you in the library. So I'm pro getting rid of library fees in general because I don't think that they actually have that much value. But I feel like people have very specific, like set in stone conceptions about what the library is and like the demeanor of librarians and that they're strict and they want you to be quiet and that they want to protect their books and that they're going to charge you and shame you for not turning things in on time. I don't think that, that those ideas are helpful or healthy uh, in terms of promoting the library and its services. That's a really simple breakdown as to why library fees are problematic, but 
that's the gist, at least in my perspective. I think that we should just get rid of them. And that sort of leads into the third misconception, which is that librarians are the gatekeepers of books, that they're strict spinsters and cardigans that want to guard the books and will only let you have one if you meet certain qualifications. That's also an image I think that we need to dispel because it promotes this inequity in libraries, that there are only certain populations that are deserving of using the libraries. And this is a thing that has been true for most of American library history, that certain populations weren't allowed to use the library, people of color, for instance, or women, um, even further back. There is probably a root and a connection between the, the librarian as a gatekeeper and the fact that we did use to actually keep certain populations out of libraries. Now that we're really putting into practice the idea that libraries are equitable spaces for all and that we should be serving our communities to the best of our ability, I think that we need to work to dispel the idea that librarians are trying to protect the books from you, um, that the books are more important than the people using them. Use the books. The books are there to be used. They bought them so that you could use them. Check them out. You know, don't worry about damaging them. Obviously, like, don't intentionally damage the books, but it's okay. You know, that's what they're there for. Like, they're there to be used. They're there to be loved especially with like children's books, you know, kids are messy. The thing that I think that children's librarians expect and anticipate. Figures like the librarian in Harry Potter being so precious about the books and not wanting the students in the school library to use the school's resources is just so completely wrong and backwards to me. And I feel like being scared of librarians and librarians as these gatekeeper figures is another source of library anxiety for people. Librarians are here to help you. Libraries are fonts of resources that are here for you to use. Do not be afraid of using them. We should, I think, work to eliminate as many of those stigmas as possible so that people do know that libraries are supposed to be welcoming open spaces. And I'm sure that they're not that everywhere. Um, there are people working in libraries that definitely don't have the same mentality, but at least laid out by the American Library Association, libraries are equitable spaces for all, and the resources exist for you to use them. So use them and don't be afraid. Librarians should not be keeping you away from the books. And if they are, then they're not doing their job well. And being a librarian is political. And not everyone's gonna agree with my particular stances. You know, I've already had people challenge me in my comments saying that librarianship is not social justice, but I feel like if you're doing it right, it is, because it's all about, you know, being a democratic institution and equitable resources for all, which, you know, sounds like social justice to me. So moving away from that a little bit is the idea that loving books means that you should become a librarian, or that I specifically am becoming a librarian exclusively because I love books, or that if someone loves books a lot, then they should definitely become a librarian for that reason alone, um, which is not true. Uh, I'm not just doing this because I love books, although I think that that's a great starting place. If you love books and you love your library and you love going to your library, then you're off to a good start because a lot of people don't use their library or aren't aware of the um, the breadth and depth of the services available. And the more that you know about that and are still encouraged into the profession, I think that indicates to me that it's going beyond just your love of books. It's about loving the principles of librarianship. It's about wanting to help people. It's about loving information and being fascinated with how it is created, how it is stored, how it is preserved, how it is accessed. It's about accessibility. You know, it's about so many, so many different things. A bunch of different kinds of people can become librarians for different reasons. And I yes, I think that the root of like loving books and loving the library are like great starting points, but I don't think that's gonna be enough to push you through because it's not just a job about reading books all day. Uh, much like being a bookseller doesn't mean that you just get to read books all day. Being a librarian also does not mean that you get to read books all day. A lot of paths to librarianship mean working directly with people and being excited about helping people with whatever they need. If you're working somewhere like a public or school library, more likely than not, their questions won't be directly about books or like you giving book recommendations. Um, as much as I would love that as a job, that's like my dream job. So there's nothing wrong with loving books and going into librarianship, but I feel like there needs to be more than that there motivating you. And the converse is also true. A lot of people in my program, fellow students, classmates, not all of them are passionate about books or reading. Some of them aren't at all. Like my first day of my first class, we were, went around the room and all shared a book that we read for fun most recently. And some people didn't have an answer because they couldn't remember. So, you know, it works both ways, but librarianship is not just about loving books. And the last thing could definitely be a video in itself, but I wanted to include it in here. It comes from 
something that I was specifically asked by a family member when I was home for Christmas. And I've also heard anecdotes of my classmates be, having been asked similar kinds of questions by family members and, and people in their lives, which is, why are you becoming a librarian? Or why do we even need libraries at all when we have Google? Now, uh, there are a lot of steps and layers to the wrongness of that query. Um, and it's difficult to unpack. And like I said, this could be a whole video, but the idea that, um, first of all, that everyone has access to Google, which is just not true. Like even like specifically in my community, uh, a third of people don't have internet at home. So the likelihood of them having Google at the ready and having the ability to know how to use Google to answer every question that they might have, you know, that's just not true. There are, so, there are many, many people in the country that don't have ready access to the internet. Um, and libraries, public libraries specifically, are one of the only places that people have free access to the internet outside the home. So yeah, that's one of the reasons. But also, you know, people have queries that can't be answered by Google. Research questions or needing help filling out a job application on, uh, online or need help setting up an email address or making a copy. And I think there's an ignorance attached to that Thing, assuming that people only use the library to answer really basic questions and not thinking about or acknowledging all of the other free services that libraries provide, like story times, access to computers, like I mentioned, um, other social meeting groups, free meeting spaces that people can use, serving as general community spaces, acting as a, as a key community resource in the face of natural disasters. I mean, they're just, like I guess I could make a very, very long video talking all about different library services. And I'm sure there are a bunch of library services that exist that I've never even heard of. This does draw back a little bit to the guy who questioned, you know, why do we need libraries when we have Amazon or that Amazon is going to become the new library. And there's just such an ignorance there for the utility of, of libraries and the number of people that rely on those resources or services and that there is no replacement for. Google cannot replace libraries. Amazon cannot replace libraries. And if you think that there's like a one-to-one -one for either of those businesses for what they provide compared to what libraries provide, then you need to educate yourself on what libraries actually do because you don't really know. Unfortunately, I think it's the thing that I'm going to have to, to address a lot from family members and, and other people in my life moving forward because I think a lot of people don't see the utility of the degree or the utility of libraries because they're privileged enough not to need them. I think it's, it's good to practice expressing this and to put that out there for those of you that might have ever questioned, well, we have these giant corporations that do things. Why do we need libraries? And it's because of, of all those things that I just said. So yeah, those are just some, some things, some myths, some misconceptions that I have heard bandied about over the course of my study thus far from both people inside my program, but also largely people outside of it. Um, and I just thought I would share some of the things that I've learned that help, I think, reinforce the importance of the degree and the importance of the services that I'm learning to provide. I'd love to hear if you have any other things like this, um, misconceptions debunked about librarianship, or if you have anything to add to the points that I've made. I wanted to keep this relatively short, so obviously I could have expanded on any of these points, um, but I just didn't want this to be super, super long. So I would love for expansion down in the comments on any of these ideas, or if you have any questions about what I said in this video, I would love to answer those as well. So yes, please let's start a conversation down in the comments below. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.